Hello, sports fans. It is Monday, September the 29th, the year 2014. And as always, a lot to get to in the sports world, so let's get it going right now. Great to be back with you guys. Hope you had a nice weekend. Hope you caught some of the games over the weekend. Let's recap what went on in the NFL. Let's start in Chicago, Soldier Field, one of my favorite stadiums of all time, where the Green Bay Packers beat the Chicago Bears 38-17. to Green Bay up to 2-2, two two. Chicago down to 2-2. Two two. You kind of had a feeling the Packers were going to win this game. Green Bay has Chicago's number. Every time I watch Green Bay and Chicago lately, Green Bay wins the game. I'm sure the Bear fans are sick of seeing Aaron Rodgers. He has four touchdown passes yesterday. I mean, the Packers did a really nice job in this game, and they just flat out have the Bears' number. I had a feeling the Packers were going to respond. The media and the fans were starting to get on them after their 1-2 and two start. Rodgers said, calm down, we're going to be fine. They played a big game yesterday. As far as Chicago... They hung on against the Jets last Monday night. They took so many injuries to their secondary. You had a feeling they were going to be in trouble here against their old nemesis, the Packers. They were, so Green Bay gets the win. Both teams at 2-2. Two and two. Let's go to Houston, where the Houston Texans beat the Buffalo Bills 23-17. Houston up to 3-1. and one. Buffalo down to 2-2. Two and two. Houston already has more wins than they did all of last year, and Buffalo has now dropped two in a row. Watt had a huge interception in this game. Watt, a tremendous interception, ran it all the way back for a touchdown. That kind of flipped the game in Houston's favor. Bills still had a chance to pull it out. They have the ball at midfield with about a minute to go. They have a first down, and Manuel just throws an awful pass down the sidelines. That's picked off, and the game is over. Manuel had two horrible interceptions in this game. The one Watt ran back for a touchdown, and the one at the end of the game, there was no need to force that ball there. So nice job by Houston. They are 3-1, and one. very surprising. And like I said, Buffalo now has dropped two in a row. Let's go to Indianapolis, where the Indianapolis Colts just bombed the Tennessee Titans 41-17. Colts up to 2-2. Two two. They've won two in a row. Tennessee down to 1-3. Tennessee has now dropped three in a row and looked bad all three weeks. A locker was out for Tennessee. Whitehurst got the start. Luck threw for almost 400 yards. This was all Indianapolis. No surprise in this game. Indianapolis is a solid team. I think they're a playoff team. We all love Luck, so this was no surprise at all. Tennessee now, they have gotten bombed three weeks in a row, so I don't like what I see at all from Tennessee. Let's go to Baltimore, where this was another blowout game. The Baltimore Ravens blew out the Carolina Panthers 38-10. to Baltimore up to 3-1. and one. Carolina's dropped two in a row. They are now down to 2-2. Two and two. I'll tell you, Steve Smith had a monster game for Baltimore going up against his old team, Carolina. Baltimore just flat out knows how to win. Each and every year, they do a great job with personnel. Baltimore is a winning organization. They do it year after year. So nice job by Baltimore. Very dangerous time for Carolina right now. They've dropped two in a row, and their schedule is absolutely brutal. So keep an eye on Carolina. They could go the other way in a hurry. Let's go to the Meadowlands in New Jersey, not too far from here, where the Detroit Lions beat the New York Jets 24-17. Lions up to 3-1. and one. They lead the division. Jets down to 1-3. and three. The Jets have lost three in a row. To me, this was the Lions taking care of business. The Lions are a better football team than the Jets. I wanted to see I wanted to see them go out there and prove it. They did. They handled their business. They get the win. Jets, hey, I don't know about Geno Smith. I just don't know about him. I didn't know when they when they drafted him how good he was going to be. He's very shaky. He does some good things, but he has a lot of interceptions, does a lot of bad things. Don't like what I see sometimes from Geno Smith. We'll keep an eye on him. The Jets have now dropped three in a row, so danger time for them as well. Detroit, hey, to me, Detroit should make the playoffs this year. They have no excuses. Their defense seems to be a lot better. like to see Detroit get a little better running game, but I like Detroit's team. They just have to be consistent. They get the win here. All right, let's go to Pittsburgh. Let's go to Pittsburgh, where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers rally and beat the Pittsburgh Steelers 27-24. Tampa Bay gets their first win. They're up to 1-3. Pittsburgh goes down to 2-2. Two two. This was an atrocious loss for the Pittsburgh Steelers. A horrible, despicable 
deplorable loss by the Pittsburgh Steelers. You cannot lose to Tampa Bay in your building. Tampa Bay was 0-3 and going nowhere. They gave up 56 points last week to Atlanta. They lost to Carolina with Carolina's backup quarterback. They lost to St. Louis at home. You cannot let Tampa Bay, a dead caucus, walk into your building in the Steel City and pull this game out at the end. The Steelers had a million chances to win this game. The Steelers continue to be sloppy. How many penalties did the Steelers have again yesterday? 13. Tomlin was ranting about that in the postgame. It seems every time I look up, Palomaro's getting a, a personal foul call. The Steelers, week after week, totally undisciplined. And I don't want to hear about these injuries on defense. I don't want to hear it. I know they had three guys out. The Steelers had many chances to win this game. Find a way to do it. Brown dropped a huge uh, pass that would have been a touchdown. The Steelers ran a perfect flea flicker. Brown was open, dropped the pass right in his hands. The Steelers missed a field goal, and they let Tampa Bay waltz down the field at the end and get the game-winning touchdown. They got no pass rush at the end, couldn't get to the quarterback. We know the Steelers' cornerbacks are not great. Remember, Ike Taylor is out. And once again, the Steelers allow someone to march down the field and score on them. The Steelers also had the ball with a couple minutes to go. One first down, they could put the game away. They couldn't do it. Terrible, terrible, deplorable loss by Pittsburgh. They needed this game in the worst way. Remember, their division is very tough. Cincinnati is undefeated. They're not going to lose many games. Baltimore's 3-1 and and has already beaten the Steelers. Cleveland is much improved. The Steelers needed this game. They needed to go to 3-1. and one. This is the soft part of their schedule. They got Jacksonville next week. And what do they do? They let this game completely slip away. 13 penalties, personal fouls, disgusting loss by Pittsburgh. I'll tell you what, the Steelers better beat Jacksonville next week or else, I mean, Tomlin is going to be under fire. Now listen, Tomlin's not getting fired. The Steelers organization does not panic like that, and rightfully so. But now Tomlin has had two mediocre years in a row. You can't start losing to Tampa Bay and then follow it up and lose to Jacksonville next week. Steelers better take care of business uh, next week. This loss is a terrible loss, though, as far as the grand scheme of things. Could come back to bite the Steelers when you look at the total standings at the end of the year. This game may cost them. Awful loss by Pittsburgh. Give Tampa Bay credit for showing some pride after giving 56 points up to Atlanta last week. Awful loss by Pittsburgh. Let me move off that game. Let me go to another atrocious game. Let me go to the London game where the Miami Dolphins beat the Oakland Raiders 38-14. to Dolphins up to 2-2. Two and two. Raiders still haven't won a game. What else is new? I mean, why do we continue to put these games in London? I don't understand it. Why are we making Oakland travel from California all the way out to London? I don't understand that. I mean, come on. I mean, I just don't get it. Why are we obsessed with having these games in London? It makes absolutely no sense to me at all. And then it always seems to be two bad teams or two mediocre teams. They make the Oakland Raiders, who are an awful football team, travel from Oakland to England. I mean, can you get any farther away? I mean, just terrible. Miami just laid it on them. You had a feeling Miami was going to respond here. Miami had two bad weeks of football in a row. Tannehill, you know, has been shaky at quarterback. The coach hasn't been very confident in him. You had a feeling Miami was going to take care of business. They did. Oakland Carr gets hurt. I mean, they are just a complete mess. I don't know if Oakland's going to win a game this year. So this, these London games to me are an absolute uh, mess. I wish they wouldn't have these London games. Let's focus on putting a game in Los Angeles before we start playing these London games. I mean, that's just me. And I, and I don't want to say anything bad, you know, about Wembley Stadium and the fans there. The fans came out. The fans were great. I just don't understand the NFL's fascination with putting a team in London. I just don't. Like I said, the English Premier League is not obsessed with putting a, a team here in the United States. I don't understand why we're obsessed with putting a team in London. And you make Oakland travel from California to England. I mean, come on. So Miami just bombs Oakland in just a mess of a game. All right, let's get off that game. Let's go to San Diego, where the San Diego Chargers uh, plaster the Jacksonville Jaguars 33-14. San Diego up to 3-1. and one. Jacksonville down to 0-4. Jacksonville, like, like the Raiders, is another awful team. Jacksonville may not win a game. I mean, this game was close early, but just like you expected, San Diego pulled away late. San Diego now leads their division. I like what San Diego's doing this year. Phillip Rivers is playing out of his mind. The San Diego defense looks like it's improved. I expect San Diego to be in the playoffs. I would be disappointed if they weren't. Jacksonville, 
I mean, Jacksonville, I mean, the same old story. How many years is Jacksonville going to have seasons like this where you just look at them and you're like, is this team going to win any games? So San Diego pulls away. They blow out Jacksonville. Let's go to San Francisco where the San Francisco 49ers beat the Philadelphia Eagles 26-21. San Francisco up to 2-2. Two and two. Philadelphia down to 3-1. and one. I'll tell you, this was all about the San Francisco defense. Early in this game, Philadelphia blocked a punt for a touchdown. Ran a punt back for a touchdown and intercepted a ball for a touchdown. All three of Philadelphia's touchdowns were on special teams or defense. Philadelphia's offense, which we love, didn't do anything yesterday. San Francisco's defense shut them completely down. This was all about the Niners being physical, all about the Niners running game. San Francisco needed this game in the worst way. Couldn't afford to fall to 1-3. Uh, and three. They come back with a nice victory here. Hey, Philadelphia, let's give them a break. They had three rallies in a row the first three weeks. Never easy going into San Francisco. But the Philly offense, non-existent yesterday. They got kind of bullied around in this game. All right, so San Francisco gets the win there. A much-needed win, like I said. Let's go to Minnesota. Here's a surprising game. When the Minnesota Vikings beat the Atlanta Falcons 41-28, to uh, Vikings up to 2-2, two two, Atlanta down to 2-2. Two two. All right, let me start on Atlanta. First of all, Atlanta's defense was horrible yesterday. Second of all, are they another New Orleans where they only play well in their building, in their dome, and you get them on the road and they're just awful? This is now two road games this year where Atlanta has looked absolutely dreadful. You have to be more consistent than that. You can't just win all your games at home. You have to play a little better on the road. Atlanta's defense was absolutely atrocious. They gave up 41 points to Minnesota. Is that possible? I mean, just a terrible loss by Atlanta. Nice job by Minnesota. With Castle out, Bridgewater uh, was the quarterback who started the game yesterday. He played really, really well. I was very impressed with Bridgewater. Now, he left with a sprained ankle. Uh, Ponda came in at the end, but Bridgewater looked very impressive. We'll keep an eye on his injury. Remember, Minnesota plays on Thursday night this week. We'll see if Bridgewater can play, but he was very impressive yesterday. So, nice job by Minnesota. Terrible loss by Atlanta. Atlanta, get it together. I mean, come on. I mean, you can't be this horrible on the road. 41 points to Minnesota. Terrible. Uh, and the Thursday game, uh, the New York Giants beat the Washington Redskins 45-14. Giants up to 2-2. Two and two. They've won two in a row. Washington down to 1-3. and three. Cousins was horrible in this game. Four interceptions. Washington had six turnovers. Just a sloppy mess of a game for them. Giants have been much better the last two weeks. They've rallied. I mean, the Giants are now 2-2. Two and two. They're right there in the thick of things in that division. So nice job by the Giants there. Cousins, absolutely awful in that game. And as far as the Sunday night game last night, the Dallas Cowboys at home beat the New Orleans Saints 38-17. Dallas up to a surprising 3-1. and one. New Orleans a surprising 1-3. and three. Dallas had a huge lead in this game. The Saints tried to rally. The Saints got it to within 14. Then the Saints ran this ridiculous fake punt. What were they doing there? I mean, if you're going to run a play there, let Drew Brees throw the ball. They want their punter to throw the ball there. So they ran a just an awful fake punt, backfired on them. From, them, from there, Dallas scored and put the game away. Really nice job by the Cowboys. The Cowboys' offensive line is starting to come together. We know they have weapons on offense with Romo you know, and Bryant. They can do some things on offense. I mean, Murray has been tremendous at running back. Dallas defense, you know, did some things yesterday, kind of hung in there. I mean, it's not easy tangling with that same offense. So Dallas, very, very nice job at 3-1. and one. Very surprising job at 3-1. and one. I like what I see from Dallas. Good job by them. New Orleans, the complete opposite. 1-3. And now they are 0-3 on the road. What is the deal with New Orleans on the road? Much like Atlanta, they cannot get their act together on the road. They play well in the Superdome, and they are like a completely different team on the road. You cannot be a Super Bowl contender playing this badly on the road. I mean, this is three times in a row this year they've played on the road and come up empty. Terrible job by the Saints. They better get their act together soon. I mean, come on. I mean, so awful job by the Saints, but like I said, very impressed with Dallas. Dallas, to me, is a very surprising team so far this year. All right, so that's kind of where you were in your NFL. Remember, tonight we have the big New England at Kansas City game. Uh, that is, that's a very interesting game, actually, in Kansas City. Very, very good home team, usually great fans there, great stadium. So New England at Kansas City tonight on Monday Night Football. As far as the college football over the weekend, listen, again, and I've been saying this all through September, 
it wasn't a great week in college football. You had a couple decent games. First of all, UCLA just bombed Arizona State last Thursday night. That was a complete blowout. Florida State was down 24-7 to at NC State, and then they rallied and kind of pulled away at the end. Baylor handled Iowa State. I mean, Stanford beat Washington. That was kind of a decent game. Notre Dame was all over Syracuse in the Meadowlands. Missouri edged South Carolina. That's where game day was. Georgia hung on and beat Tennessee. To me, the game of the weekend was Texas A&M and Arkansas at Dallas Cowboys Stadium. Arkansas was leading this game 28-14 to in the fourth quarter. Texas A&M rallies to tie, and A&M wins it in overtime. Didn't like Arkansas's play calling in overtime. I they think they had a fourth down and two in overtime. They tried to plow right up the middle, and A&M kind of stuffed them, and A&M hangs on and wins. Arkansas is coming. They are coming. They are going to be a very good team very, very soon. You can see the pieces are starting to come together for Arkansas. They're probably not ready this year, but look for them maybe next year. And Texas A&M is a very solid team. They're going to be right there for the SEC title game. So that was kind of your game of the weekend. The Florida State game was decent as well. I'll tell you, Florida State... They're giving up a lot of points this year. I mean, this defense was supposed to be as uh, better than last year's. I don't see it. They gave up 41 to NC State. Oklahoma State laid a lot of points on. Clemson should have scored a lot more. So Florida State, I mean, I know their schedule is soft, and they're probably going to be in the Final Four, but they don't look nearly as good as they did last year. So the college football, once again, a little spotty, but this week coming up, I think we're going to have a great week in college football. I'll get to that on Wednesday. All right, as far as your Major League Baseball... We are ready for the playoffs. As far as the American League wildcard game, it will be Oakland at Kansas City tomorrow. Oakland hangs on and wins. The Mariners come up a little short. As far as the National League wildcard, it will be Wednesday, San Francisco at Pittsburgh. And on Thursday, the ALDS, it will be Detroit at Baltimore. And Friday, the NLDS, St. Louis at the Dodgers. And, of course, the Angels and Washington are waiting for the winner of the wild card games to get their schedule. So we're pretty much set for baseball. That will get going tomorrow. As far as the Ryder Cup, well, once again, Europe did it. They beat my United States squad, and they did it pretty convincingly. 16.5 to 11.5 to me, this was pretty... It was never really that close. The United States had a brief moment in the first day, but Europe kind of controlled this from start to finish. Phil Mickelson not happy. They didn't play Phil Mickelson at all the second day in this Ryder Cup, so Phil was squawking about his playing time. To me, Europe just has better players right now. Remember, no Tiger Woods. He didn't make you know the roster this time. Europe just seems better. I'm not surprised by this at all. I mean, Europe has is, is, is been dominant in this tournament for a while now, so I was not surprised about this at all. I'll tell you, here on the East Coast of the United States, this was hard to follow. Remember, these matches were starting right in the middle of the night. I had to DVR some of them. Some of the results I got before I watched it, so it was very difficult with it being overseas to follow the Ryder Cup, and I'll tell you, it was all Europe. So congratulations to Europe. They once again win the Ryder Cup. Hey, the United States, they got to get it together. Very disappointed in their effort, but honestly, not surprised at all Europe won. All right, so you guys are all set. You guys are all caught up. Tonight, like I said, Monday Night Football, really nice game. New England at Kansas City. Kansas City's playing a lot better. Those fans are to die for in Kansas City. Great stadium, great atmosphere. New England didn't play well at all last week when they beat Oakland. I'd like to see if New England can step up their game tonight. So New England at Kansas City. As far as tomorrow, we will have our NFL picks. Of course, the baseball will start tomorrow as well. And Wednesday, we will do our college fix picks. I think finally this week we're going to get some really good college football games. There is some nice college football games this weekend after a, a slow September for college football. I think it picks up. I think it starts this weekend. Okay, you guys, thanks for the support. Thanks for tuning in. You guys enjoy your Monday Night Football game uh, tonight. You guys stay safe. I will talk to you tomorrow, Tuesday. NFL picks coming up. Talk to you then. Take care.